Okay, Angelica, you ready for your Garmin 430 training? Yes, sir. Let's now, go. there's a whole bunch of things on this unit that you don't have to do, but I'm going to focus on the things that you do have to do. So this is the Cliff Nose version of the Garmin 430. I go through this little routine where I start it up, and the first thing I look at is the aviation database. Okay. You can ignore the obstacle database here. It's the aviation database that has to be within spec. Okay. Now, this is good till November 8th, so fine, good to go. If it was expired, whatever you do, do not get into the plane with your DPE and have an expired database as an instant hook. So right. what you want to do on your pre-flight is determine its expiration date. If it is expired, take this chip out here, lift it up, pull it out, and bring it into dispatch. And then dispatch will go ahead and update it, then put it back. Make sure you put it back right side up. If you put it back upside down, you're going to need dynamite to get it back out again. So All make right. sure it's up the right way. Okay, yes, so once you determine aviation database is current, go ahead and hit enter. And now you're going to look at the instrument panel self-test. You'll notice here the left CDI and the left flag are half left out of view, and the vertical CDI and vertical flag are out of view. That refers to this gauge here, which is slaved to the GPS. So you want to see that, that the vertical CDI is half left, flag is out of view, and the horizontal CDI is, or lateral is half up, flag is out of view. Then you want to turn the OBS here to a known heading. Let's turn it to 180, and we see that it's 181, which is pretty good. Let's try... 090 and you want to check it at 091 that's good so go ahead and hit OK now that routine I just did is what you should do prior to each and every flight you'll notice when you open it up you've got COM1 here and NAV1 here now right here you'll notice um, some thick white letters these are chapters there's the NAV chapter there's the waypoint chapter AUX for auxiliary nearest now you're only going to use so many of the pages within each chapter. Here's nav page 1, nav page 2. The most pages you'll use in the nav function will be nav page 1, 2, and 5. All the other nav pages you don't really need to worry about. Here's a little tip. If you find yourself lost in the Garmin 430 and you're somewhere you don't know where you are, press and hold clear 3 seconds and it'll take you right back to nav page one and if you go to nav page two you're on the situational awareness awesome. page all right cool another thing you might want to do when you're starting up the Garmin 430 is check to make sure that you could shoot our nav approaches and that you could shoot lpv approaches with okay. your was so you want to go to aux and check this i'll let you do it the big knob will change the chapters little knob will change the pages go ahead okay. and go to aux page two now hit cursor by pushing that in and with the big knob bring it down to bring prediction Good. Now hit enter. Now take the big knob and move it over to compute rain. One more. Good. Hit enter. Now you're computing rain. Rain's available, so now you can see your RNAV. Awesome. Hit cursor twice to get out of it. One, two, and then come over to aux page four, little knob. Good job. Cursor and take it down to SBAS selection. Enter. Now, WAS is on. That means you can shoot the LPV approaches. You can turn it off if you want to. If you want to practice RNAVs, just go ahead and highlight that, hit enter, or rather bring it up to on, highlight it, and then you can turn it to off like that. Okay. We're going to leave it on. Enter. Now, take me back to nav page two. Just press and hold clear. And you're good. All right. Let's see how to build a flight plan. So what you want to do is, if you want to go from here to Baymanet to, say, Atmore and back to here, Pensacola, mm -hmm. you can hit flight plan. And it starts with KPNS, that's where we're starting from. Hit cursor, and let's bring it down to the next next line here. So we're gonna enter Baymanet, that's one Romeo eight. Oh, hold it, time out for a plane. So go ahead and enter one Romeo eight in where the cursor is, and use the little knobs for the. So one, go back, go back, keep turning real hard to you two in the numbers, keep going left to in the numbers, and then go all the way down to one. Keep going past A. One more, bingo! Bring it to one. All the way to the left. Keep going. There you go. All the way to one. Big knob takes it over to the A, and then you take that to R. So to the right, there you go. Good job. Romeo, and then one big knob over to eight. 
Now hit enter. And there's your there's your pink line from KPNS to one room eight. That pink line denotes the leg that you're on. And if you wanted to go back to Pensacola, you could just go to KPNS, just like you did. Or go to Atmore. We talked about doing that. You go to um, Zero Romeo One, but let's go back to Pensacola. And this would be your flight plan. Enter. Whoops, get back. I'm out of that. And that's in Southeast USA. Enter. I accept it. And there we are. Anytime you build up your flight plan, if you want to skip the next leg and go direct to somewhere in your flight plan, mm -hmm. you just simply highlight it, go direct, enter, enter, and you're on your way to that next waypoint. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at about take a look at now how to enter approaches. This is something that you're going to have to do, obviously, as an instrument pilot. Um, one thing you want to make sure is that when you're going to enter an approach to a particular airport, that you're going direct to that airport. Okay. So let's go ahead and enter an approach to Pensacola. Say the ILS 17. First, let's make sure we're going direct to Pensacola. So go hit flight plan. And you can highlight Pensacola and go direct, enter, enter. Direct, enter, enter. <clears throat> now you're on your way to Pensacola. So when you hit procedure, every approach that you pull up here where it says select approach will be the approaches from Pensacola. Okay. Um, another way to get to Pensacola besides using the direct enter, enter from the flight plan would be to go to the nearest function. Let's go ahead and get out of this. Take yourself to the nearest function with the big knob. That's the nearest chapter. Nearest. Now, you're in the nearest last page, which is airspace. Let's whip it over to the first page, and you've got nearest airport. You can see all the airports nearest to where we are right now, and then farther out, about 50 miles or so. It only has maybe 50 waypoints. We'll give you whatever airports you want to go to. You hit cursor, and you highlight the airport you want to go to, then hit direct, enter, enter and you're on your way to that airport. That okay. means that the procedures you pull up are the procedures for that airport. Okay. But let's go ahead and go back to... I'm going to take you out of this. All right, so take me using the nearest function, direct to Pensacola. Good. Now cursor. Direct, enter, enter. We'll make a pilot out of you yet. All right, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'll say you are. All right, good. So let's go ahead and enter the ILS-17. Hit procedure. <clears throat> Select approach, enter. ILS 17, so hit enter. Let's go on vectors, hit enter. It'll tell you whether the loader activated. <clears throat> Let's make it active, so hit the big knob down to activate. Enter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. And now you're on your flight plan. Now with, hit flight plan one time, and that takes you out to nav page one. One click over, gives you nav page two. And if you zoom out, <clears throat> excuse me, if you zoom out, you can see your magenta line, and that's where you're going to navigate. Okay. Always navigate to the magenta line. You're not navigating ever to a, um, a white line. Once you go to the magenta line here, and you're on your way to Brent, which is the final approach fix, mm -hmm. after you pass Brent, this white line will switch to magenta, and then now you're, um, now you're navigating on the magenta line okay. to the next waypoint or to the runway. It's really important, very important, that you remember this. Could bust your check ride if you don't. Okay. If you're doing a frequency-based approach, what you must do is make sure that the CDI button is locked here in V-Lock. You see how I can go between GPS and V-Lock? Mm -hmm. If you're on an RNAV approach, it'll be in GPS. That will slave this gauge to the GPS. V-Lock will slave this gauge to the active frequency. Okay. Once you enter an approach, if it's a frequency-based approach, like the VOR8 or the ILS17, it'll populate automatically in MAV page 1 in standby the, that frequency. You can toggle it between the standby and active by simply doing this. If you want to manually enter that frequency, you can hit cursor and the cursor button will go down here, allowing you to manipulate these values. And so you can manipulate them that way. Make sure when you have a frequency based approach, I don't need to tell you this, that you tune and identify that frequency. So the way to do that would be to hit the button here. See how ID pops up? Now hit nav one. And we would turn the volume up and listen for, did you hear it? Mm -hmm. That's the, um, that's the ILS, so hit nav one again, hit ID, now you're good to go and you can manipulate that frequency. Okay. And you can do the same thing for, for this one if you were doing the VOR. Okay, good. So make sure, we call this 
affectionately the $600 button because that's about the cost of your check ride. All right. Yeah, if you go between GPS and V-Lock the wrong time, the wrong way, you are going to get hooked. Okay. Now, when you're shooting an approach and your examiner wants you to do a, um, a missed approach procedure, to shoot the published mist, you want to make sure that you hit the OBS button here when suspend is activated. You see it here in green. And that will happen when you cross the threshold of, um, of the runway during the approach. And if you do not hit suspend, the Garmin 430 will assume you're flying a back course and it'll take you straight out. If you want to shoot the, the published mist, you must hit suspend. It will then now sequence you to the published mist, which in this case would be a climbing right turn. 600 feet to 2,000 feet to softly and hold, something like that. But it won't know to do that if you don't hit suspend. Okay. All right, so in the nav function, you've got nav page one. This will give you a um, more or less a CDI and an idea of where you're going. You're from Brent to the runway here. That's your, that's your pink line, you're active. We are now traveling from Brent to runway 17. Here's the distance from the runway, your direct to heading and your track currently. Nav page two gives you your SA page. It's a good idea to learn how to manipulate the Garmin 430 between those two pages for your situational awareness. Nav page five, I talked about that earlier. That is sort of like your compass. Okay. So instead of using the magnetic compass, you can use the GPS compass here, which is a little bit more accurate. And a lot of the DPEs, DPEs rather, would want you to, um, to sync your HSI to nav page five. Okay. So you may want to do that once you get plane moving. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at, one more time, the nearest function. The nearest page one is the airports. It'll tell you the name of the airport that you're closest to, the bearing from where you are now to that airport, how far away you are from it, and what approach procedures that are available. Page two will give you the nearest intersection. Page three, NDB. Now page four is important because this is VORs. Okay. The cool thing about using this is you don't have to actually go to the VOR um, or navigate to it necessarily using the nearest page, but you can. But you can use this for DME, because it will give you a distance from softly, say, or a distance from Crestview. Okay. So you can use this DME and give yourself a uh, situation awareness in terms of a bearing. But if you wanted to go direct to it, go ahead, cursor. Alright. Let's go to Crestview, direct Crestview. So bring the cursor down to CEW. Big knob. Direct, enter, enter. Now you're on your way to Crestview. Alright. Let me show you how to set up a hold. Here, how about you ask me this? Well, how would you set up a hold? Well, how do you set up a hold, Joe? Well, the way you do that, funny you should ask, because I was just about to talk about it, okay. is um, let's go to the VOR8 Pensacola, and we'll hold as published on the VOR8 at Softly. So go ahead, hit Procedure, and select Approach, Big Knob, Enter, and let's take the Big Knob and take it down to the VOR8. Good job. Enter. And let's go ahead and activate the approach on vectors. Enter. Activate it. Big knob. And enter. Yes. Enter. There you are in your flight plan. Normally you'd hit flight plan and get out of it to go to your SA page, but we're going to stay on flight plan because what you're going to do is hit cursor and bring it down to where it says hold. Now, in order to set the hold up from where you are now to softly, all you do is hit direct, direct, enter, enter. Now you're on your way to the hold. And the cool thing about the Garmin 430, it'll tell you how to enter the hold. Whether you're going to do a teardrop or a parallel or whatever, it'll tell you how to enter and it'll time it for you as well. Okay. Sweet. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, that is actually. And that's really the basics. That's what, If you can do that, everything we talked about just now, that should get you through your check ride without any problems. All the other functionality, if you want to become a power user with the Garmin 430, Get on YouTube or even go on the Garmin 430 tutorial online and we'll give you all the, the nitty gritty details that you might want. Make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Good job. All I need is the basics. <laughs> all right. High five.